good morning students the next probability class in today's class we will start with base theorem now let us see what do i mean by base theorem the next topic after we completed with the last class we started with conditional probability probability after that we learned independent events multiplication theorem so we have finished with what are these concepts and topics on the next one is base theorem let me define what is this base theorem the statement of the base theorem is given by if e1 e2 so on up to en there are n different are n non empty events which constitute a partition of sample space s so in a sample space on a random experiment we know how to write back sample space in that sample space we might take these are the events what we are given what are events the subsets of the sample space e1 e2 en there are n different events what are given such that we are given that is e1 e2 en are pairwise disjoint when i say disjoint the intersection of two sets is equal to a null set a and b are said to be disjoint sets if a intersection b is equal to a null set so that all these events are pairwise disjoint that means e1 intersection e2 is a null set e2 intersection e3 is a null set e3 intersection e4 is a null set pairwise they are disjoint when are two sets disjoint if they are equal to a null set E1, E2, E3, so on up to EN. The union of all of us is the sample space. That is, I consider all the sets put together when I take the E1. It is nothing but a sample space. <coughs> when we take any event of a non-zero probability, we define one more event A of a non-zero probability. Then probability of event B I when Even A is already occurring. I told you on a sample space there are n different events which are considered. So these events are given as E1, E2, E3, so on up to E. So on the sample space there are n events. The union of all these constitutes the sample space. So in the union when I take, I get back the sample space. And the intersection of two of them will give me the disjoint set. That is a null set. Then I define one more event A. A is any other event on a non-zero probability. <coughs> Sorry, on sample space S there is one more event A. What is defined? Then they have asked what is the probability of that? That probability what they define is conditional probability of out of this n event, any one event. When event A is already occurred, there was one more event what we defined. Conditional probability of one of these events from one to n, there will be one event E I may consider. There will be one or ten one. When that already event A is occurred, it is given by probability of event E I for which event I am considering, maybe the fifth event or sixth event, into probability of. The event A when event E I is already occurred. That is conditional probability of event A when event E I is already occurred divided by summation is sum of the terms. What is the sum of the terms? I have to take wherever J is there from one to n, one to p, so on up to n. The summation of that sum of all those terms give me the summation. What is the summation? Probability of E J that is J stands for one. Into conditional probability of event A, the event other event what I considered when event E J, that is E J when I consider E one, E two, E three, so on up to E N. This event is already occurred. So this is the formula what I have on base theorem. Now let me explain to you what do I mean by this. I consider a sample space S. In this sample space there are n events. The condition is the union of all the shoots to constitute that sample space. Yes, the union when I take of all the subsets, I get back the sample space. But the intersection of those two is nothing but a null set or a disjoint set, I can say. So any two pairwise if I take the intersection, it is a null set. There are no common elements. But the union of all this, I get back. It is nothing but the sample space. Then I define one 
Marconi by his aid. On that given, they have asked us to find the conditional probability which is given by the base here by this formula. What do I mean by this? Out of these all events, what I have? A1, sorry, E1, E2, E3 here. I consider one of the events E5 occurs. On an event A which is occurred is given by probability of event which one phi I consider into probability of this event A when event phi was already occurred. Conditional probability of event A which was defined later such that event phi was already occurred because I took I as phi. So probability of the event phi into conditional probability of the event A when event phi was already occurred is divided by the summation of this will. Is nothing but the probability of P1. J, I'll start with one, the first element. One I leave this into conditional probability of event A when P1 is occurred plus probability of P2 into conditional probability of A when P2 is already occurred. So on of P2. Which one is what is its end? J is equal to 1 to N. So probability of Pn. Conditional probability of A when event N is probably the summation is the like sum of the terms. So the sum of the terms is defined by this. You will consider the probability of each event into conditional probability of event A when that event occurred. First event E1, then second event E2, so on up to E. So this is the formula of base theorem. Let me say you in simple words what do I mean by this. I consider one example. Let me take three boxes. E1, E2, E3. Are the three different boxes? In all these boxes, I consider there are some points. Let me take over that circle. So in one box, I consider there are two points. In the other box, two silver boxes. Now that remote 
focus on phase theory of the supra box to when this data is given of the events occurred and the condition of probability and which is the event what is defined when they ask the question from box to how to get back a good one and probability we will take in phase theory. Few problems we work on. Only the statement of the theorem we have, you don't have the two forms. Only the statement of the theorem you have to remember. So this formula when I consider, I say that S is the sample space, there are n number of different subsets. E1, E2, E3, En are nothing but the subsets what I have for the sample space. The union of all that will constitute the sample space and intersection of two of them will be the null set. Then there is an event A, what is occurred? When an event A is occurred, I have to obtain the probability of that. Take the probability of that out of the given events, additional probability of one of the events that such that when A is occurred is given by probability of PI into conditional probability of A that is when PI is occurred divided by sum of the terms. Probability of E1 into conditional probability of A when event E1 is occurred plus probability of E2 into conditional probability of A. When event 2 is occurred, and probability of E3 into conditional probability of A when event 2 is occurred, so on up to n events. This is what the base theorem states. So, using this formula, let us work out few problems. As I gave you an example, we consider few more problems in these cases, and you will learn the concept how to use this base theorem. This is the formula what you have to remember for base theorem. So whichever the event they ask, for that you are considering the event A is already occurred. Then the reverse of that has to be removed. So remember this formula, this we will use in the problem center. This is one of the important concepts. Base theorem is important. One three mark question you can expect from this. Base theorem is very important. A three mark question always in your question paper in part C is expected question. So as I told you, the theorem the formula you have to remember for the problems. So let us start with the problems on base theorem. Problems on base theorem. The first problem what is given is bag one contains three red and four black boxes. There is one bag containing three red and four black boxes. While black bag two contains Five red and six black boxes. So in bag two, there are five red and six black boxes. One of the ball is drawn at random from one of the ball is drawn at random from one of the bags. There are two bags from which they draw one of the ball. And it is found to be red. There are a set of balls, black and blue. But what we draw from the bags, that ball is nothing but red. Find the probability that it was drawn from bag 2. From the second bag, we have drawn the red ball. That is what we have to find the probability. Now here, when I read the question, here there are two events what is occurring. What are those two events, bag 1 and bag 2? So, in a bag 1, there are few balls, red and white, and so red and black. And in bag 2, the second event also there is, Few balls which are of two colors, red and black. So two events are E1 and E2, that is bag one and bag two. Then they are saying that one of the ball is drawn at the random from one of the bags. They're taking out the ball and it is found to be red. Red is the third event A, what is occurred. Choosing the red ball is an another event which is occurred. So there are two events, bag one and bag two. Which consists of balls, right? Then black. Now they are saying you are choosing one of the balls from these bags, and that is found to be red. This is the other event what is occurring. That event is taken as A. A is the third, one more event what occurs on the sample space. That event is choosing the red ball. Then they were asked, find the probability that it was drawn from back. So E1, E2, EN are the n events what I 
in this case there are two events given and they have told that the other event A is occurred. What is that other event A is occurred? Choosing a red ball. Now you have to find the choosing red ball probability which is drawn from back to. You have to find out from back to that is event two. What are the chances of getting of choosing a red ball? That is what is based on. You are going to find the probability where choosing from the second bag. Second bag is E2. The chances of choosing from the bag to a red ball. That event is occurred. That is the red ball. What are the chances you are choosing? That is probability of choosing E2 from A. I don't even know E2 are the two events. That is bag one and bag two. Now you have to find the probability of choosing from bag from E2. E2 is the second bag. Of which one? The other event which was occurred. What is that other event that occurred? Of taking the red ball. Red ball is A. So this I have to find using base A. Now whatever is given in the data, let me first write down. Now I am saying that the random experiment is there are two bags which are given in which there are few balls maybe of two different colors, red and black. So the two events what I will consider under this sample space are bag 1 and bag 2. So let me say E1 is the first event that is choosing choosing ball from bag 1. E1 is the first event. What is that? Bag 1. So I will take down choosing ball from bag 1. E2 is the second event. What is that? Choosing ball from bag 2. Now I will make it bag 1 and bag 2. I will make it bag 1 and bag 2. Bag 1 and bag 2. So the two events what has occurred in this random experiment are there are two balls. Ball, sorry, two bags. Not balls, two bags. That is bag 1 and bag 2. So bag 1 is the first event E1 and bag 2 is the next event E2. But in these two bags, there are set of balls which are both of red and black color. But the other event what has occurred in this experiment is to be found to be red. So I will say even A is nothing but choosing red ball. Choosing red ball. So in this experiment, I am going to define the two bags as event one and two. Then the other experiment, what is occurred? That is other event, what is occurred? Third event, what is considered to be occurred after considering the events even is A. That A will be choosing red ball. So let me define according to the given data. First, I have to find probability of even E2. Now, if I take a sample space in this random experiment, there are two subsets. What are the two subsets? E1 and E2. That is bag 1 and bag 2. So what are the chances of the occurring? Even one chance is 1 by 2. Number of favorable outcomes. There are only two bags. So total number of outcomes is 2. For even E1, number of favorable outcomes is 1. Similarly, for E2, it is 1 by 2. In the total experiment, there are only two events. That is bag 1 and bag 2. So total number is 2. In that for this event favorable is 1. So probability of E1 is 1 by 2, probability of E2 is 1. Now I consider conditional probability of one of the ball is drawn at random from one of the bags. So E1 and E2 are the two bags. From that I am drawing one of the ball and it is found to be red. Red choosing red ball as I think has to be conditional probability of choosing a red ball from bag 1. Conditional probability of choosing a red ball from bag. Let me see what it is. Now in bag one, there are how many balls? Three red and four black. Totally three plus four, there are seven. But what are the chances of picking only a red ball from bag one? Red ball from bag one is there are only three red balls. So three red balls I can pick out out of the total number. What is the total number of balls? Total number of balls is 3 red plus 4 black, that is 7. But favorable is only 3. 3 red balls are getting now from back 1. I have the chances of taking only 3 red balls from back 1. 3 red balls because they have given 
only three red balls are there. Divide it by total number. How many total balls are there? Seven. Now let me see the probability of choosing a red ball from that two. Getting back a red ball, that is the event A which is numbered, from back two. Now in back two, it contains five red and six black balls. So I have the chances of five favorable outcomes. Out of this five, any one of them. So in back two, there are totally five red balls. In back two, what is the total number of balls? Five plus six, that is eleven. Five plus six, that is eleven. So probability of choosing the red ball from back two, back two is given to me. That is five red balls I can choose. Total number of balls is five plus six. This is the first part of the data what you have to understand. What is given in the data only I have to I not use base theorem again. According to the problem, I had two facts, E1 and E2. E1 and E2 are back one and back two, what I did. When I read the question, the first two sentences say there are back one and back two. So back one and back two, I defined it as E1 and E2. And they told that in these bags, there are some balls. And they told that one of the balls is drawn at random from one of the bags. From those two events, they are drawing a ball. And that ball is found to be red. Choosing the red ball in this experiment is A. That is what I'm going to define the event A as choosing a red ball. Now they have asked you find the probability that it was drawn from second back. You are going to find the probability of that it was from back to from back. What are the chances of getting a red ball? Probability of from back to getting a red ball. Red ball is what you can pay as a For this, I apply the base. So the first part of the data says there are two bags back one and back two. I take it as event one and two. Choosing the red ball, I consider it as A. Now the first thing I have to find is probability of E1, probability of E2. The chances of getting these two back, the two events. There are total number of events is only two. Favorable outcomes for each event is one, right? Then, probability of choosing a red ball from back one. Probability of choosing a red ball A. That is, in back one, there are only three red balls out of the total number of balls. Three plus four, seven. Probability of choosing a red ball from back two. From back two, what it is five red balls out of the total box. What is the total box? Now let me find what is asked for probability that it was drawn from back. So probability of choosing from back to a red ball. This statement what we learned in base theorem using that we have written the data. Now I'll apply the formula. What is the base theorem formula? I want probability of E2, the second back when choosing the red ball. So it is given by probability of E2 into probability of E2, the red ball from back to E, I which event that is the second event. So probability of the second event into probability, function of probability of choosing the red ball from the second. Divided by the summation. Summation that I told it is sum of the events. What is that sum of the event? The number of events in the how many events are occurred in this problem? There are only two. So it should be sum of two times. Probability of E1, the first event, into probability of choosing a red ball from back one. Plus probability of E2, the second event, into probability of choosing a red ball from back two. So this is the formula what I take back. So here I am finding the probability of choosing from back two. So back two is E2. Probability of choosing E2 that is from back to a red ball. The formula is expanded as the base theorem formula is for which event I am finding probability of E2 into conditional probability of choosing a red ball from back to red ball from back divided by how many events are there? Two events. So it should nation should be only sum of two terms. The number of events you have in the experiment sum of so many terms. In this experiment, there are only two bags, two events only we are considering, one and E2. So it should be sum of two. What is it given by probability of E1 into probability of choosing a red ball from back? 
plus probability of P2, additional probability of choosing the red ball by choosing from back. Probability of P2 into probability of choosing the red ball from back. So let me substitute the values. Huh? All the values for this have already been in the data. Probability of P2, I know it is not. Into probability of choosing a red ball from back to. Probability of choosing a red ball from back to is 1 by 4 divided by the summation. Probability of P1. What is probability of P1? Half. Into probability of choosing a red ball from back 1 is 3 by 7. Plus probability of P2. What is P2? Half. Probability of choosing a red ball from back to 1 by 1. So this is the values what we have already written from the data ancestor. Let me simplify this. I continue to If I have to simplify this, I have the numerator half into 1 by 1. In the denominator, shall I say the sum of the terms from this board? Shall I put half from the sum of the terms from both of them? I can take out half. If I take out half from what is left out? 3 by 7 plus 5 by 9. So I will take out half common from this board. Left out is 3 by 7 plus 5 by 9. Half and half get to be 5 by 9 divided by the sum of two fractions. Let me simplify. Sum of two fractions, I know we have to consider the LCM and simplify. What is the LCM for 7 and 11? Both are 5 numbers. 7 into 11, 7 is 7. 7, 11 is a 77. So 11, 3 is a 50. Plus 11, 7 is a 77. 7, 5 is a 30. So I get back 5 by 11 divided by 1 by 5 is 68 by 77. Can I say these two are my equals? So if I simplify that. 5 by 11 into 77 by 60. Then the ones are 11, 75. 35 by 60. So probability of choosing from the second back a red ball. Probability of choosing from the second back a red ball is nothing but 35 by 60. So the solution what you will take from this. So this is our PPH. So let me consider one more problem. Okay, second problem. Given three identical boxes, one, two, and three, each containing two cops. This was the example what I considered when I explained the base theory. The same problem I considered. Given three boxes, there are the boxes named as one, two, and three, and each box is in box 1, both the coins are gold. In box 2, both are silver coins. In box 3, there is one gold and one silver coin. So there are three boxes. In one box, two gold coins. In the second box, two silver coins. In the third box, one gold and two silver coins. A person chooses a box at random. Any one box is picked at random. And he takes out the coin. If the coin is gold, that is, there are three events what are happening. Box 1, box 2, box. In all the boxes, there are two two points. And other event on this experiment, what is happening is choosing the gold coin. The person chooses a box and takes out the coin. And that coin is found to be gold. So that is event A. What is the probability that the other coin in the box is also gold? So I have to find what is the probability that choosing the gold coin in a box which has other coins also gold. In which box do I have both the coins gold? In box 1. I've got in box 1 both the coins are gold coins. So I have to find the probability that the other coin in that box is also gold. In box 1, I have to find the chances of getting the gold coin using the base data. So here they're not given box 1 directly, but they're given you the other the box is also good. So 
in which box you pick out the gold and then remain a gold coin where only two gold coins are, which is the box one. So you have to find the probability from box one. Probability of choosing from box one the gold coin using this. But first, let me write down the data what I am in this problem. So when I write the data in this problem, I have to consider the sample space as choosing the coins with the boxes. That is the experiment, random experiment. In this random experiment, there are three events of that. That is box one, box two, box three. Prime data, E1, E2, E2. Are the two events what I have. Box one, box two, and box three. So these are the three events, E1, E2, E3. In an experiment, given the identical box, that is the experiment what I have in mind, even if we are box one, box two, and box three. Now, in that, I a person who chooses a box in random out of these two one boxes away, and the coin is in that. That coin is gold. So A is the event of choosing a gold coin. Gold coin choosing is what is the event A. So in this random experiment, the events E1 to E and R, three events, E1, E2, E3, three boxes. And choosing the coin, and that coin is found to be gold, is that A event is nothing but gold coin. Now you have to find the probability of choosing from box to one a gold coin. Box one, why? Because the gold other coin in the box is also gold. The choosing gold coin and the other coin left out should also be gold. Is should I have both gold coins. In which box do I have both gold coins? Box, both the coins are gold in box one. So probability of finding in box one the gold coin, that is what has to be taken. So now here, what is in the data let me write I have three events. So probability of each event in the sample space, there are totally three events. So the total outcome is three. The chances of probability favorable outcome even is 1 by 3, 1 by 3, and 1 by 3. Totally, there are three events, so that is 3. The chances of each event is 1 by 3. Now, probability of choosing a gold coin from box 1. Event A, what is occurred is the gold coin that I am choosing. Probability of choosing a gold coin from box 1. Now, choosing a gold coin from box 1 means in box 1, the data says both the cards are gold. So out of two gold coins, what I have, I have to choose the gold coin. So it is nothing but 2 by 2, which is 1. I know that in each box, there are only two coins. Total outcome should be 2 only. In box 5, both the cards are gold. So two gold coins, out of the two gold coins, what I have. So 2 by 2, that is 1. Probability of choosing a gold coin, that is A. From which one? Box 2. Now, in box 2, what I have in box 2, both are silver coin. I don't have gold at all. So, this event A is not occurred at all. Because probability of choosing from back to there is no chance of getting a gold coin. So, it is 0 by 2 coins. There are no gold coins. Divided by the total coins in the box, it is 2. 0 divided by 2 is not the Probability of getting a gold coin from box 3. That is the third box. Third box is taken as event 3. So, probability of choosing the gold coin from box 3. In the box 3, there is one gold and one silver. In box 3, there is one gold and one silver. So, chances of getting a gold coin is 1 out of the 2 coins what is there in the box. So, this is what we have to do. But this is not asked. What is asked? What is the probability that the other coin in the box is also gold? The other coin in the box is also gold when I'm picking the gold is both should be gold coin. That is box one. So I want the probability of box one choosing a red coin. This is unknown. And probability of getting from box one a gold coin. Probability of getting from box one a gold coin that is unknown. This is what has to be obtained from the data. So I use the base theorem. When I use the base theorem, it is probability of getting from box 1. It has to find the probability from box 1 because both points should be good. Box 1 or gold 1. The 
formula based on the theorem says we probability of which you will task e1 into probability of getting a cold card from box 1 that's already given in the data already popular property of choosing a cold card from box 1 divided by the summation when i take the summation in this case can i say there are three events e1 e2 e3 should be sum of three events there are three events summation will be sum of these three so probability of e1 into probability of choosing the cold card Plus probability of e2 into probability of choosing the gold coin plus plus probability of e3 into probability of choosing the gold coin from the box three. It is it is three events, so sum of three events. So already I have data. Let me substitute probability of e1 one by into probability of choosing a gold coin. From box one, it is divided by again probability of e one one by three into probability of a on choosing from box one plus probability of e two one by three into probability of choosing the gold coin from box two. In box two, we have data the silver coin, so I got zero by two. That is nothing but plus probability of e three. What is probability of e three? One by two into probability of choosing the gold coin from box three. One by two. Now, if I simplify, one by three into one I can cancel this. Can I take out one by three common block from this sum of the terms? So all the three I have one by three. I take it outside. What will be left out? First one one plus zero plus. One by three and one by three can cancel. One divided by one plus half. One plus zero is one. That is one one. One plus half is three by two by two. So probability of picking from the box one a gold coin is nothing but two by two. Probability of picking from box one the gold coin is two by two. We are found probability of choosing a red, that's a gold coin from box one. That is probability of choosing a gold coin from box one was one from the data. We are found from base theorem probability of choosing from box one a gold coin. That is two, right? This is our use. Next problem, third one. A bag contains four red and four black balls. Another bag contains two red and six black balls. Similar type of data we had in the first problem. So there are two bags containing the balls, which are red and black. One of the two bags is selected at random, and there's a ball is drawn. So again, one bag is chosen and a ball is drawn. From the bag, which is found to be red, that is red is the one we are going to choose. A. Find the probability that the ball drawn is from the first bag. Find the probability that the ball drawn. We have to find out from the first bag choosing the red. So now here, the random experiment. There are two bags. Bag one and bag two. We are going to choose one bag and one bag. E one and E two. And what is the chance we are A choosing the red ball? Because we are told that one of the balls is drawn from the back. One of the two bags is selected at random and the ball is drawn. So they are picking out from the two bags a ball. Which ball which is found to be red? So A is choosing the red ball. Now you have to find the probability that the ball is drawn from the first bag. So from the first bag, we have to find out the chances of choosing the red ball. That is event B. Now, first we find the probability of E1 and E2. How many events are there in the sample space? There are two. One bag, a bag, and another bag. That means two events, E1 and E2, which are taken as one bag is like one, another one as bag two. So it is. 
just one and five. Totally there are two, and each chance is equal to just one. Now, probability of choosing a red ball from bank one, and probability of choosing a red ball from bank two are equal to five. When I take bank one, the bank contains four red and four black. Totally there are eight. Four plus four, that is eight balls. How many red balls are there? That is the favorable outcome. He is nothing but choosing red ball. Favorable outcome is two. So four by eight. Choosing a red ball from bank one. How many red balls can I choose? Four red balls out of the total. Total is nothing but eight. So I can simplify this one by two. Now probability of choosing a red ball from bank two. The another bank is the second bank. Bank two contains. Six white balls, so black balls. Two red and six black balls. So totally, how many balls are there? Two plus six, eight balls are there. But the chances of getting A, that is a red ball, choosing the red ball is only two by eight. That is one by eight. Now, using this theorem, let us try to find what is asked. Find the probability that the ball drawn is from bank one. So from bank one. Ball. What ball? Red ball. So this probability of B1 into probability of A. Then I choose red ball from bad ball divided by sum of the terms in this experiment or in this problem. How many events are there? Two events. So it is sum of two terms. So probability of B1 into probability of choosing the red ball from B1. Plus probability of B2 into choosing the red ball from B2. So E1, if I take half into choosing the red ball from bank one, one bank, then E1 again half choosing the red ball from E1 minus half. Plus probability of E2, it is again half. Into probability of choosing a red ball from bank two, one by let me simplify half into half. In the denominator, shall I say I can take out half common? If I take out half common, what will be left out? Half plus one by two. Sum of the terms. Take it half common, half plus one. This half will have to be cancelled. Half divided by. If I take the zero, four is the zero. Half plus one by two, so four is the answer. Two and four are one. Two two is also two plus one. So one by two divided by e by two. One by two into four by two. Two and four are multiples, so I can make it as two by two. So probability of choosing from bag one a red ball is two by two. Two by two. Simplify this. Here I take the cancel the numerator and take a half common from this book. Half plus one by two. Half is not by simple. Half of the numerator will be cancel this. In the denominator, sum of the terms. This fraction take the answer. What is the answer? Four is the answer. Two twos are so two plus one. That is three by two. You have fraction take the answer. Take the answer. One by two, four by two. Four is the answer. Two by two. Two and four are multiples, so you can cancel the two and four. So two will be left of two by two. That is the value what you get back for probability of choosing to bank one the red ball. That is two by two. Next problem. In a factory which manufactures both. So there is a factory which is manufacturing the boats. Machines A, B, and C manufacture respectively. So the three events are A, B, and C machines respectively. Twenty-five percent, thirty-five percent, and forty percent of the boats. So machines A, B, and C are the three events what we have, and they are manufacturing boats in these percentage: twenty-five, thirty-five, and forty percent. Of the outputs, five, four, and two percent are respectively defective boats. In a machine, what is sorry, what are the other manufacturer manufactures the board? There are few defective ones, and their percentages five four and two percent. A board is 
drawn at random from the product and is found to be defective. Defective mode is what is found. What is the probability that it is manufactured from machine? So there are three machines. These are the events one, two, and three. And there are few defective modes percentages given. The outputs in which the defective modes percentage is five point two percent are respectively the defective ones. The correct ones are few, and the defective one they given the data as five point two. Now you have to take out the code in random from this, and it is found to be defective. That is A. A is nothing but choosing the defective one. What is the probability that it is manufactured from machine? So the three machines are E one, E two, and E three. The machines are E one, E two, and E three. Machine A, B, and C. And what is A here? Choosing the defective board. Choosing the defective board. That is event A. So three machine, three events. And choosing the defective board is A. What is asked to find the probability that it is manufactured from machine B? Probability of choosing from machine B is event two or defective board. This has to be taken from base. Now. What are the chances? Probability of machine one, machine two, and machine three is already given. Machine A, B, and C manufactured twenty five percent, thirty five percent, forty percent is already given. So probability of E one, E two, and E three and E three hundred. What is probability of E one? Twenty five percent, twenty five by hundred. Probability of E two is thirty five by hundred. And probability of E three is forty by hundred. So the three events are the three missions, and then defective board is A. You are finding the problem of choosing from mission two a defective board A. That is don't know. We have to use base theorem and find out what is given the probability of the three events. Mission A, B, and C manufacture twenty five percent, thirty five percent, forty five percent. That is the problem. Percentage means five hundred. So twenty five by hundred, thirty five hundred, and forty percent. Now, what I have to obtain probability of choosing the defective board is A from machine one. Probability of choosing defective board from machine two. Probability of choosing defective board from machine three. That is all I need to know. Of the outputs, five, four, and two respectively, percentage respectively are defective boards. So five. Defective boards from mission one. Defective boards from mission two is four, four by hundred. Then defective boards from mission three is two by hundred. So we have the data of probability of all the three, and you have the probability of getting a defective board from each mission that is already given in the data. Five or two percentage are respectively the defective. So choosing the defective board from machine one is the first one. Five by hundred percent. Five four two percent. So five by hundred. Defective board from machine two four by hundred. Defective board from machine three two by hundred. Now use the base theorem to obtain. So the data are written below. So if I have to find the value of this, the formula gives me. Probability of choosing from mission two the defective board is probability of which mission mission two into probability of the defective board from mission two divided by summation should be sum of three because there are three events occurring. Probability of E one into probability of E one plus probability of E two. Into probability of choosing the defective board from E two, probability of E three, into probability of choosing the defective board from E two. That is the formula. Now let me substitute. E two is thirty five by hundred. Choosing the defective board from machine two is four by hundred. Divide. Probability of E one is twenty five by hundred. 
into probability of choosing a defective word for E1 is 1 by 100. Plus probability of E2, 35 by 100. Into probability of choosing a defective word for E2 is 4 by 100. E3, the next one, probability of E3 is 40 by 100. Probability to be a defective word from E3 is 2 by 1. Now, let me simplify this. If the denominator cannot say 100 square is common to the power of 50 so that I can simplify it. So, 35 into 4, I put it as 100 square is 100 into 100 is 100 square. The denominator of 100 into 100 square is the common one for 1 by 100 square. What is the top? 25 into 5 plus 35 into 4 plus 40 into 100 square is like a cancer. You can simplify this. It is only the one thing, but 5 goes up 20 to add it. 12, 1 form, divided by 125, 25 comes up again. Suppose at 22, 12, 13, 14, plus 3. So that is equal to 140 divided by 125, 140, 3, 5, 3, 4. So I have probability of choosing from machine to a defective board is 1 or 3 by 25. Get simplified further. There is 5 tables. What can be simplified further? Probability of choosing from machine to a defective board. I want it as 1 or 3 by 3 for 5. 2s are 10. Eight sir. Six sir. Five six sir. Thirty nine sir. So twenty eight by sixty nine. I change it to decimal place. So this is how we find from machine to a defective board using the base theorem. So few more problems on base theorem. We will continue in the next class. Just go through this. In the simplification, since I have common variables that are taken out, cancel the numerator to the end, I will simplify. So, next class, we will continue with few more problems on this.